Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another anticipated releases video. So I did one at the beginning of the year and most of those books that I talked about were released in January, February or March. So here's another video with some releases that I'm really excited about for April, May and June. So why don't we dive right in? So we're gonna start out with the historical fiction that I'm really excited about, and then we'll go to kind of miscellaneous <laughs> books in basically every other genre. But the first book that I want to talk about is When Stars Rain Down by Angela Jackson Brown. The cover of this had me thinking that it was something totally different. I think because of the colors and because the silhouette of a woman on the cover, it kind of made me think of like a romance or maybe even something contemporary, like that treatment to a book cover did not scream historical fiction to me at all, nor did it scream what the book was about. The book is set in the 1930s in the South, and I believe it's in a little town in Georgia, but basically the, the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, descends on this town, which means that the residents, both black and white, need to grapple with the sort of social ramifications of this post-reconstruction era society that they live in. So I feel like this is going to be a book that is going to have a strong social commentary. I also feel like it's one that's going to be pretty topical when it comes to discussions of race and racism. But I think what really kind of interests me about this book is that I don't know of a book that really takes the KKK on head on in this way. I can think of books set in the Reconstruction era, so right after the Civil War, that have moments where the KKK makes an appearance, but it's not, it's usually part of a larger story and the story isn't about the impact of the KKK itself and what they represent. So that intrigues me about this book, but I also really like that it is set in the 1930s, which means that it is removed from the Civil War by a couple generations at least, but you're still looking at the ramifications of the racism and slavery that has allowed a group like the KKK to have an impact on society still like years later. So I'm very intrigued by this, don't know if anything I just said made any sense, but yeah, I'm looking forward to picking this one up. The next book is Social Graces by Renee Rosen, and this book just seems like it's going to be a good time. So it is set kind of during the Gilded Age in Manhattan, so the late 19th century, and it is dealing with the sort of old moneyed class in New York. This is Astors versus Vanderbilts. This is Caroline Astor versus Alva Vild Vanderbilt. And it's probably reductive to call this a cat fight, but this is like the battle royale between these two society ladies in New York in the 19th century. Like, there's something about that that just sounds like it's going to be a good time. As a New Yorker, I am very familiar with the names Astor and Vanderbilt. Like, they're all over buildings. But these are like Madison Avenue old money blue blood names. I don't know much about either of these particular Astor slash Vanderbilts though. So I am here for this rivalry between these very wealthy women in the 19th century who are probably getting up to all sorts of mischief to try to one up one another. Like I'm here for it. So yeah, this, this just feels like it's going to be a fun one as I said, like I'm, I'm here for it. The next book is In the Shadow of the Fire by Hervé Lecour. This is published by Europa Edition, which is an independent publisher that I really enjoy. They 
bring really exciting international voices to the North American and British markets. And this is actually a book that's translated from France. And it is about the Paris Commune. I don't know that I've ever seen a book about the Paris Commune, which is what drew me to this book to begin with. And so I'm excited about this as being a setting, but also this is like Paris Commune meets The Alienist, which is a book I've never read. I watched the TV show or maybe Jack the Ripper or the Yorkshire Ripper. Um, like there's like a criminal element to this thing. So basically Paris has gone to hell and in the midst of it, these women keep disappearing and when this one young woman disappears, her fiance and this other guy basically are trying to find out what happened to her. And I guess try to find her before she turns up dead would be my guess, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, like this feeds my history nerd part of my brain and it also feeds the like true crime obsessed part of my brain, which has me watching literally every true crime documentary that Netflix has ever put out. But yeah, I like, it just seems like it's going to be a fun ride. So I have really high expectations of it um, and will report back. But yeah, like this just seems like a time and a half. Next is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, which is the retelling of a Greek myth of Ariadne and I have basically been searching for a way to get that same feel that I got after reading The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker last year which made me realize that I might actually be more interested in historical fiction about the Greco-Roman time period than I previously thought. So this seemed interesting and I also feel like this book has appeared on my Goodreads like feed countless times already. So I'm amped up about it at this point, but it's looking at Ariadne, who I believe is the princess of Crete, and her brother is the Minotaur, and she actually helps Theseus? Am I getting these names right? Probably not. Uh, but she helps Theseus kill her brother. So it's looking at this character from Greek myth who is a young woman and is retelling it, I guess, through her perspective. It's compared to Circe, which I have not read, but really should at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one. Um, I don't know much more than what I just told you, um, but I'm intrigued. The next book is The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nivo, I believe is how you pronounce the author's name, but correct me if I am wrong. I hate mispronouncing people's names. So I don't know a ton about this book, but I do know that it is set in the 1920s in the Jazz Age, which is appealing to me. There is apparently a magician angle to this book, which has me curious. And then the other part of it is that the main character is Asian and queer living during the 1920s. And so while she has a lot going for her, I think she's well educated and has financial means, there are a lot of things going against her as well. So I'll be interested to see where this one goes, but it does Ha hold a lot of appeal and the cover is just beautiful in my opinion. So the next book and the last book in the historical fiction section is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. I've been exploring the historical romance genre and might potentially do a vlog on this at some point, but I am essentially looking for an Evie Dunmore fix while I'm waiting for Evie Dunmore to finish her third book. And so I feel like this might be the ticket. The main character is a Victorian lady who happens to also be a thief. And her love interest is an assassin who has been contracted by someone, I think a pirate. I, d I don't know the details, I haven't read it but he's basically being contracted to kill her. So I'm getting some like 
Mr. and Mrs. Smith vibes here that I'm here for. Um, and this just feels like it could potentially be a lot of fun. My only thing is that I really, really hope that there is steam because I do know that when it comes to me in romances, whether they are historical or contemporary, I get salty when I feel like there's no payoff and no steam. So we shall see. But this just feels like a cotton candy read and I am excited for it. The next book is one of the nonfiction titles that I'm really excited about, and that is The Unfit Heiress by Audrey Claire Farley. And this is about Anne Cooper Hewitt, who was an heiress whose mother had her declared feeble-minded in court, I believe, and then had her sterilized against her consent. This is a book that I feel like is going to infuriate me because of the injustice of it all, but I'm also intrigued because I know the name Cooper Hewitt. There is the museum in Manhattan with that name, but I know next to nothing about the family. I'm interested in seeing what this says about the like larger social commentary of the 1930s when this is all happening, because I do see that it has to do with eugenics and I think there's like a eugenics law and a eugenics society. And when I think eugenics, I usually think Nazis in Germany, which is probably very myopic. So seeing this taking place in the United States, seeing something like this happening to a young woman, it's going to make me angry, but I am very very curious about where this goes and what else I learn about this type of thing in history. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. The next book is The Cave Dwellers by Christina McDowell and this is actually contemporary fiction that is compared to Bonfire of the Vanities and it's set in Washington DC and is basically looking at the elite class in Washington DC and what they're getting up to behind closed doors. I don't know much more than that. I did not read Bonfire of the Vanities, but I do know that that is a satire by Tom Wolfe. So I'm wondering if this is also a satire, which if it is, it could be really interesting to read. I apparently am drawn to stories currently about the elite classes and all the bad things they get up to. So we shall see. I don't know much more than I just told you, but it does sound like a fun ride. <laughs> Next is The Portrait of a Mirror by A. Natasha Jafkowski whose last name I am butchering, I am sure, but this is another retelling of a myth and it is going after Narcissus. But yeah, I don't know a ton about this book. All I do know is that it is about these two couples who I think are fairly privileged, like have great careers, have money, are well educated, and they cross paths and the two couples become like enamored with each other in the same way that Narcissus becomes enamored with himself. So I am intrigued. Again, this myth angle just kind of spoke to me and I am interested in giving it a go. I do think again that this is contemporary fiction, so it could be hit or miss for me, but we will see. I am very interested in it though. The final book is The Woman They Could Not Silence by Kate Moore. I am basically like, Kate Moore, take my money. Um, I read The Radium Girls last year. I know I was late to that party, but it was one of my favorite books of the year. It made me so angry, and yet I enjoyed the entire experience because I was learning so much about these women whose story I felt like needed to be told and that was the ultimate justice for them for everything that they went through. So I'm really hoping that this book does very much the same thing in that it takes a little known story 
and gets those individuals justice by telling their story and sharing it with a broader audience. But this book is about this woman whose husband actually has her committed to an asylum, even though she is completely sane and rational. And while she's at the asylum, she realizes that she's not the only one here who is rational, who has been put into an asylum unjustly, basically just to get them out of the way or to keep them silent. And I knew that the asylum system had been misused by individuals in the past. I mean, it's a big theme in gothic literature for a reason. Um, it was something that, like, hysteria as a, a, like, medical condition was used into the 20th century, and there were countless women who were lobotomized and that sort of thing. But there's a lot more that I could potentially learn, and I do think this book is going to make me furious, but I am here for it. And I really enjoyed Kate Moore's writing style. I think it was very straightforward and was still able to make you connect with the characters. So I'm really hopeful that this one will be a really fantastic read. So yeah, <laughs> those are some of the books that I'm really excited about that are coming out in the next few months. Um, depending on when this video goes live, a couple of them may already be out, but I'll be sure to put the like release dates in the description box for you. But I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!